This question says, using T results. You don't have a choice, the method is prescribed. Okay? So I have to do that with this question. I will point out to you that T results questions are so much less pain for you than they were for me because of this. Now, in case you don't remember, T results is an extension one thing, right? So when you have a look at the reference sheet, let's scroll. It begins with all the two unit stuff. This is just your algebra and so on. You can see uh, there's some series and sequences stuff there as well. Good Lord, they give you exact values. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on a bit further. You can see here's where all the calculus begins. And since we are doing it right now, I will also point out, have a look at these guys, right? They're all there. Even the derivatives and the chain rule results are there. No excuses, okay? Now, I will again repeat, just like I did when I first introduced this sheet, that especially for a class like you, I'm not expecting that you will be referring to this because it should be all up here. It is faster if it's up here. If you have to refer to something, there's a time penalty associated with this. This sheet, particularly this part of this sheet, is not intended for you, okay? Does that make sense? However, as we move on, this is the part that I'm interested in, okay? So you can see here, you've got the T formulas there, right on the left-hand side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. Okay. And they are situated here underneath the angle sum identities because... Why? Why are they there? Because I've got to do with angle. Well, because where these come from is from a specific instance of one of these. Namely, which one? It's the double angle for 10, okay? So what I'm going to quickly walk you through before I just go ahead and solve the question is, remember I said, like, I, I don't think you should necessarily be going here to remember this. It's a nice check, it's a nice safety blanket, but where does it come from, okay? Here's the way people back in the days before a reference sheet worked through and understood this and therefore made sure they rem remember it correctly, okay? Um, 10 to x. 10 to x. This is a result you absolutely should know, and most people have no trouble remembering this one after they've used it a little while. It's 2 tan x on 1 minus tan squared. Okay? So this result here, you can see, comes directly out of here. One of the easy ways to remember that there's a, there's a plus and a minus happening here. right? How do you remember which one's a plus and a minus? Well, if you put a minus here and there was a double angle, you just get zero. That's not right, okay? So that's how you know you got positive on the top, negative on the bottom, okay? If I then go ahead and replace 2x with x, if I halve all the angles there, I'm going to write this. All of the angles get halved. And there you can see, can you recognize this in connection to this? Do you see it? There's my, there are my t's, right? Let, tan, let t equal tan of x on 2. So on the basis of that, I say, if 10x equals this, then it is reasonable to start off visually by saying, well, if x were an acute angle, I could construct a right angled triangle that includes it, like this. And the tan relationship connects which two sides? Opposite and adjacent, right? So here's 2t, here's 1 minus t squared, and there's only one thing left. If you need to, you can go right back to Pythagoras, but most people are quite fine to remember eventually, well, the last one must be 1 plus t squared. Another way to remember, oh, that must be the case, is because the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle, right? So clearly, you couldn't have 1 minus t squared over there and 1 plus t squared, that wouldn't make sense, okay? So off the base of this triangle, this is the triangle that I used to draw right next to my exact value triangles to remember all of these guys. Okay, you read these straight off of here. Okay, now we're ready to approach this question. When you have a look at this, the first thing you must do is a straight substitution. Okay? So if you let t equal tan of x on 2, okay, you must state that because where on earth do these t's come from? I'm going to look at this and say that's 1 over... 1 over? 1 over cos, right? So I'm going to be taking the reciprocal of this guy, right? So it looks like I've got 3 <coughs> times 1 plus t squared, 1 minus t squared. You happy with that? Just a straight substitution of 1 over cos. Minus, and this is not what the round is, equals 5. Okay? So where do I begin from here? What's the obvious first step to do? 
I could put them together as a fraction, but you can see eventually I'm gonna I'm aiming towards a quadratic. I mean, the the t results themselves are always leaning towards a quadratic because of those t squareds flying around. So I might as well sort of save myself the effort and just make the quadratic right away by multiplying through. You see that? Going to multiply through by the common denominator, which is why in fact they gave you this. It's in fact to make it easier for you. Okay, common denominator. So I'm going to multiply through by one minus t squared. Let's just do it all the way. Are you happy with that? This just needs a minor amount of tidying up. I guess I'm going to add um, that guy there, and then I'll subtract. Looking good? Divide through by 2, because there's no reason why not to. And at this point, oh, I, didn't, I didn't even intend that. At this point, you look and you think, OK, now what? You have no choice, do you, right? This is a disgusting quadratic. You're not going to be able to do anything meaningful with it. So I'm going to go straight to saying t is equal to, and I will launch into the quadratic formula. Okay. Now, I don't think the quadratic formula is something that um, I'm too concerned with you in terms of getting your right answers. So I think we can go straight to saying minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus, sorry, b, wait, yeah, b squared minus 4ac, right? So that's going to be 1 plus 16. That sounds like 17 to me. Yep. Divided by 2a, which is 8. And it doesn't get any simpler than that. So now what does this tell me? I solve for t. That's as far as you can go with t. But t, in fact, is head of x on 2. So now I'm going to bring it back to the actual question I was given. Okay. So from here, I'm actually not going to bother too much with the actual mechanics of this because I think we're okay. You've got two separate values that x on 2, 10 of x on 2 could be. That means you've got two separate values that x on 2 could be. Okay. So you're going to have 10 of x on 2 equals the first solution or 10 of x on 2 equals the second solution. Right? You can use your calculator, find the angle that will give you x on 2 by going shift down. <coughs> <clears throat> That'll give you another number, and this will be in radians, right? Then what are you going to do with those? Yeah, you're actually solving for x, not solving for x on 2. So you're going to multiply both of those by 2. And these will give you some solutions, okay? Now there are two things left to check. Two things left to check, okay? Firstly, I need to make sure I haven't missed any solutions, okay? So from this point, I can check fairly easily, knowing that the periodicity of these two functions is... Well, let's have a look here. This is 1 over cos, and this is 10. So therefore, it's going to be a bit messy, but you'd go every pi radians, OK? Because you get the same copy every single time. Um, you can check each of those solutions really easily by popping them in. If you stay with the exact values, you can literally do 3 over cos whatever, 10 of whatever, and hopefully you'll get 5 at the end. So just test. That is the much simpler way than trying to work out quadrants this way or the other. You're wasting time in an exam. Okay? That was the first thing you need to check domain. What was the second thing? Pi. 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 I need pi. to test x equals pi. Well done. Why do I need to do that? Very good. My very first line of working, this one here, immediately excludes pi as a solution. As soon as you're talking in, in tans, you're kind of stuck, right? So you have to test x equals, we used to say x equals 180, because 180 degrees on 2 is 90, which is where 10 has a discontinuity. But of course, we're in radial land at the moment. Okay? From memory, I don't believe x equals pi is a solution, but you need to show that. There is, I believe this is a three mark question. The third mark is exclusively for showing whether this is or is not a solution. And it's a classic thing. I mean, after you've gone through all this legwork, you're just exhausted. You're like, can I get to the next question? And many students will just forget to do it. Okay? Um, and sacrifice a mark, which is very easy to get. Just chuck it in your calculator, um, get a value out. What is the value, by the way? What is 3 sec pi minus 10 pi? We could actually work this out, Zero. couldn't we? What's, what's sec pi? What's cos pi? Uh, cos pi is negative 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So that's negative 3. What's tan pi? Zero. Okay, so all I need to say here is that is not equal to 5. Therefore, x equals pi is not a solution. And having excluded it, I just return back to my original pair. 